In this video, we will look at the basic building blocks of JavaScript. First, we'll look at JavaScript's five data types, and then I will show you what variables are and when you need them. Note that these two building blocks are the same for whatever programming language you learn. So if I was doing a Java tutorial, the concepts would be the same. The difference is in the syntax. And this is a good thing because unlike learning natural languages, when you learn one programming language, it will be much easier to learn another one. So with that said, let's dive right in. Now, the simplest way to start writing JavaScript is directly into the browser. Since, as I mentioned in the previous video, all modern browsers are able to interpret JavaScript and come packaged with so-called developer tools. So open either Firefox or Chrome browser on your laptop. If you don't have these browsers installed, I suggest you install them because using browsers like Internet Explorer to run and execute JavaScript is not a good idea. So I would download either Firefox or Chrome and in your browser, right click somewhere on the surface and select inspect. If your browser is in your native language, then it would be called something else, but it should translate to inspect. And when you click that, you see something like this. And this space right here is called developer tools. And here you should see a console tab. And when you click on it, you get this space where you can write JavaScript directly. In the next video, I will show you all the different places where you can write and execute JavaScript and which one you will usually use as a developer. But in this video, we're going to use the browser console so that I can demonstrate some uh, simple examples. So the first data type that we're going to talk about is numbers. Obviously, when you're writing an application, you need numbers. Some of the examples are uh, YouTube displays number of subscribers for each channel or number of likes for each video or how many videos one has. When you search something on a web application like Google, for example, you usually see total hits. Uh, etc. So these are all use cases where you need numbers and these examples use whole numbers. Uh, but for example, when you have an online shop where you need to display prices, prices obviously won't be whole numbers always, but rather decimal numbers with cent precision. Also Amazon ratings, right? They can be 4.5, for example. And in JavaScript, there are own data types for whole numbers and for decimal numbers. The whole number data type is called integer. And these are numbers like 0, 300, minus 45. So positive, negative numbers, they're all integers. And decimal numbers have a data type of decimal. And again, they're positive or negative or 0. So 0 0.0, um, 90 point seven hundred seventy seven minus 50.5. They're all decimals. The second data type is string. The way I like to explain what string is, is basically everything you see on your keyboard. So obviously all the letters, no matter what language they're in, but also all the special characters like ampersand, uh, percent, plus, minus, and also the space character. On your keyboard, you also have numbers and numbers are characters or strings also. So how does JavaScript know whether you mean a number like integer or decimal, like five, for example, or a character five. It knows it using quotes. So you tell JavaScript that you're using string by using quotes. It could be single quotes or double quotes. So these single characters or any combination of them is a string. So let's see a couple of examples. So three in quotes is a string, a, u with umlauts, letters from non-English alphabets, combination of letters and numbers, special characters like an email or in password. And also an empty space character is also a string. So just to mention here, so difference between character and string. So character is basically just one letter or one number, one special character. And string is a character or a combination of multiple characters. So these are all strings and this single keys are characters. Another data type in programming languages is Boolean. Now to understand this, 
Let's say you enter wrong password when logging into your application. Usually you get a message saying you provided a wrong password or you accidentally enter wrong credit card number uh, when buying tickets um, or invalid email address when registering. So in the background, developers write JavaScript code that validates whether the information that you provided is wrong or right or correct. And to express that wrong or correct state, booleans are used. So word true expresses correct state and false expresses wrong state. So again, just like with numbers, you can write a simple string false with quotes and JavaScript know that you mean a string. Without quotes, it will be a Boolean expression false. That's how JavaScript can differentiate between those two. In addition to that, true false can also be used for simple yes no situations. Like is the apartment on Airbnb available to book on this date? Yes, no, that will be true or false in Boolean terms. Or is user logged in? Depending on whether logged in or not, you will see different web page. That's a Boolean expression. Is it a premium user? True, false, also a Boolean expression, etc. Another data type is array that expresses lists. Think of applications that display lists of the same kind of data, like list of friends on Facebook or list of apartments on Airbnb or list of comments for your Instagram picture. Lists have their own data types in all programming languages. In JavaScript, its data type is an array. For example, list of friends names will look like this. It will be an array. That's an array that includes multiple names. And note the syntax of the array that encloses square brackets. So that's how JavaScript knows or can interpret that it's dealing with an array. Or you could also have a list of ratings for Amazon products, for example. So this will be an array with numbers. As you see, array contains other data types. So here we have a list of strings and here we have numbers. And in JavaScript, you can mix different data types inside an array. Here we have integers and decimals in one array. You can also write an array like this, where you have string, integer, and Boolean expression. And the last data type in JavaScript is an object. Now in the Amazon review, for example, you don't just see a list of ratings. You also see the author's name next to the rating and text they wrote in addition. So you need all this information grouped in one item in the array. You express that using object data type. So a single rating object will look like this. And note the syntax of curly braces. So as we saw, array was expressed using square brackets and object is written using curly braces. So that syntax is important so that JavaScript understands what data type you are writing. Another example is an apartment object on Airbnb, which will include all the attributes it has, like location, price, ratings, description, availability, images, etc. So an object for that information will look something like this, just with more information inside. And here you see that the syntax highlighting uh, of the browser is also helping to see that strings, booleans, and numbers are colored uh, in different ways, meaning that JavaScript understands the difference between them. So as you see, object has key value pairs so that you know which value stands for what. So all this author name, user 12, rating five, these are key value pairs where the key basically describes what the value stands for. And the name of that key is totally up to you. You decide what that's gonna be. Also, you can use any data type as a value inside of an object. So here we have a string, integer, boolean, and array as a value. And you can also use another object as a value inside of an object. And finally, uh, if we go back to the ratings, you will have multiple rating objects. So a list of rating objects. So the final list of these rating objects will look like this. So you will be an array with square brackets and it will have 
bunch of objects that are comma separated. Now, this is probably the most complex structure you will deal with most of the time. So it shouldn't get much more complex than this. Now we saw all these data type example values, but how do you use them to write a so-called logic in JavaScript? The simplest use case is some basic addition, subtraction, etc., for numbers. You can use simple arithmetic from elementary school to calculate basic things. And here I will use the chance to break this common misconception that you have to be super good at math to learn programming, which is completely 100% wrong. I've been a software engineer for many years and I have worked in a lot of different projects and I have barely used anything more advanced than simple arithmetics like plus, minus, multiply and divide when writing web applications. So in JavaScript, you can do all of this. You can do subtraction, multiply, divide. And you can also combine them just like you would with a calculator. And of course you can do the same with decimals. Some real life use cases for these basic arithmetics are, for example, when you add multiple items to your shopping cart on Amazon, you see the sum and you also see the price breakdown, which is item prices plus shipment costs. Or when you have product ratings based on all the individual ratings, you display the average rating. Or on Uber, for example, you see the distance from pickup locations to the destination in kilometers or miles and in minutes. All of these are simple calculations which are possible in JavaScript. Now, obviously all these operators are meant for numbers, but there is a case where we can use the plus operator for string data types. So what will happen if I write string 12 plus string 12? So we get 1,212. So what happened here is that JavaScript knows that these two are strings and not numbers. And instead of adding them, it handles them as strings by gluing them to each other. And in programming, that's called string concatenation. And no, you don't have to remember that word, just so you know that there are weird names for simple things in programming. The same way you can glue a string to any other data type. So you can do blah to 12 and the number will also turn into a string so to say or you can do the same with boolean values because javascript interprets that as you want to create another string out of these two values and these examples probably don't make much sense but in the next section of this video i will show you some more real life examples why this concept is actually very important to understand the concept of variables, think about the following scenario. You change your username on Facebook. So obviously your changed username is displayed on your profile, but also all the comments that you wrote before the name change should now appear with your new username. And also in all your friends lists, your new username will appear, right? So this means if you had Facebook code where your username is written in all those different places. So you have your username in the profile section, you have your username in comment one, comment two, etc., and in all your friends lists, right? Written directly as is. Or let's consider another example. Think about online shop. Each product has a price and is displayed in a list in the product's own detail page and maybe also in combination to other products. So if the store now offers a discount, and the price changes, obviously the price should be updated in each location where it's displayed. So again, in code, it will look something like this. Obviously this is not a valid JavaScript code, but just to give you an idea. So somewhere in one JavaScript file, you have the list of products where the product price is directly written as is. And you'll have the same in a detail page section of the product and combination. Now, when the username on product changes in those two scenarios, all these variables need to be overwritten, which means that you will have to go and change the price here and here and here. And same with the username, change it in all places where it's used. Now, that would be 
absolutely inconvenient considering applications are so dynamic and things change a lot. So that's where variables come in. So instead of writing the actual value in 10 different places, you write the value once and then reference it 10 times from 10 different places. And that reference to the actual value is called a variable. And you give variables a name that makes sense for that value. So for example, product a price equals 50. So now you create a reference for the value 50, which is called product a price or username equals app user a. So you take the actual value, which is string and create a reference to it. But in addition to that, you should also let JavaScript know explicitly that this random name that you just came up with is a variable. And you do that using a var keyword like this. And remember keywords are words that have special meaning to JavaScript. And because of that, if you noticed the coloring or the highlighting of the word changed once I added var in front of it. So now JavaScript knows that this is a variable keyword and this is the name of that reference or variable or the same with product a price variable. And in code, it will now look like this. So first you'll create that reference somewhere like this. And then in all the locations or all the places in JavaScript code where you need that value, that actual number value, you use the reference instead of the actual value. So you have your text and the reference to the number in all those different locations. And here you note know, the plus operator that I showed you earlier. This is an example of string concatenation, meaning string is glued to another value. And this is where this concept is very useful. So when you run or execute this line, what happens is that JavaScript in the background replaces this reference with the actual value. So when I execute this, I see product a price 50. And this is a real example where plus operator with strings is actually very important. And you will use this a lot because you will use variables a lot. In order to make this variable concept stick more, let's consider two additional use cases. First, consider multi-language applications. On most applications, you can select a preferred language and see all your navigation buttons, etc., in your language. Now, if application supports 10 languages, obviously developers don't create 10 different websites. Instead, the same text is translated in 10 different languages and referenced using variables. And depending on which language the user selects, the correct reference is used. And the second use case, which is very important, is user input. So when you sign up for a web application, you need to enter your name, last name, email, password. These are all user inputs. So what you input in the application. As a developer, when you, when you prepare that code for future usage, you don't know what these values are going to be because users can enter anything. But what you know is the name of the variables that will reference these values. And this way you can use the actual values without even knowing what they are. Now, if you want to practice these concepts so that you can remember them better, in the description of this video, I will link some websites where you can do practical exercises on the JavaScript concepts that I explain in my videos.